Right, Mick Tuck, A-A-K, or A-K-A even, the Cockney Carpa. <laughs> <That's laughs> How you doing, mate? Yeah, right? I'm good. I'm good, Mark. You well? Yeah, I'm good, mate. A bit chilly. Um, we're, what, a mile from the end of Heathrow runway, so there might be the odd plane pop over while we're having this chat. Um, yeah. But I'm interested in talking to you, mate, because I know that most of your fishing is short sessions. Yeah. Um, it's a fallacy these days. You don't have to go and fish for three days at a time to catch a decent carp, do you? The only time that I fish three days or longer for carp, Mark, is if I go abroad. Go to France. So yeah. typically yeah. my sessions are short 12 hours, maybe right. up to 18. It's very rare for me to fish anything longer. So does it, does it tend to be days or overnighters or a bit of both? Mostly overnights. Um, yeah, I tend to switch to day sessions during the winter. Yeah. So I find the night time nights really are kind of like null and void. Right. So it's about maximising the amount of daylight hours and just fishing sure. off the barrel, really. Yeah, sure. It's, it's not that comfortable either, is it, fishing at night no. in the winter? Let's face it, you know, we all want to go and catch carp, but at the same time, we're not getting any younger, are we, mate? No, no. So, you know, those those really long winter nights when those temperatures are dipping, it's not the best, is it? They're difficult. Yeah, yeah. They're difficult. So in, in that case then, um, short day sessions, particularly, let, let's talk about the winter. We're sat here in the autumn. Um, first thing is a venue, isn't it? You know, it's no good going somewhere that's like 80 acres with three carp in it in the middle of January and expecting to do well. It's not going to happen, is it? That's just not going to be possible. So what, what sort of venue would you normally look at fishing? So I've got a club lake that I fish. I um, can't name it because of club rules. One of those club reasons. lakes. Yeah. So it's a club yeah. lake. It's local to home. It's 10 minutes away. Right. It's around about four acres. So for me, I can push the gear quite comfortably around on sure. the barrow and take a look for that opportunity. There's a few spaces or spots that are around the lake that you know that are going to be holding carp. Right. Whether you can get them to feed or not is another matter. So I tend to try and start out in those spaces. Yeah, sure. If, if I'm not getting a feel for the presence of carp, no liners or, or the bite, yeah. then I'm, I'm on the move. Cool. And that's, I think that's key as well, isn't it? Just staying mobile. Too many people will turn up quite often in the car park swims, get every bit of gear that they own, plot it up, they might only be there five or six hours. They're not moving, are they? They're not moving. No. And, 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 yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I, I think it's the biggest tip you could give. Um, obviously, in my time previously on magazines and that, the biggest questions we used to get asked was, you know, what rig? Um, now, I know, because we've been playing around with a few of your bits while we're getting sorted out, I've got a very, very interesting rig here. Um, and the first thing that springs to mind is it's a bottom bait rig. Whereas every man and his dog at the moment seems to be on the Ronnie, um, you know, or a stiff hinge rig or a combi rig, they're, they're all, you know, they're all geared up for fishing, your, your, well, a pop-up, and, and quite often at least an inch, inch and a half off the bottom. But that definitely is not a pop-up rig. Just talk me through it, mate. Yeah, so as you, you know, you, you quite rightly call out there, Mark, everybody is doing pretty much that style of fishing. Mm. But for me, I'm fishing on a weedy lake but I want to be fishing a clear spot. So I don't really need to be presenting the bait off the bottom. Right. I want to be as close to the weed, but I want to be in a position where I can present the bait. And if I can present the bait, I'll go for bottom bait all day long. Sure. Carp the bottom feed is predominantly, let's yeah, face it. Of course, so yeah. Those rigs, those runny rigs, those multi rigs, they're all going to catch carp, but I just want to lay it on the bottom. Mm. Maybe a little bit of balancing out, as you can see there. I've got like half a, a mainline pastel top up um, with the bottom bait. Some of the hook holes that I've had, both home and abroad, on my recent session away, have been phenomenal. They've nice. been like get the forceps out. Right. Yeah. You know. Brilliant. That's and what you want ultimately, because the one thing we don't want to do, especially in colder conditions, you're not going to get as many bites. The last thing you want is them falling off. Yeah. Brilliant. I really like it. Um, I notice as well. Obviously, you've got the um, like the, the aligner on that, the kicker, um, and you've got a beak point hook as well, which is ridiculously sharp, by the way. Yeah. I always think when you're playing around with a rig, or if you're tying a rig, when you tie a rig, if you keep nicking yourself when you're tying it, that's a sign of a good rig and a good you know hook for me. Work. Absolutely, yeah. But what's with the beak point? Why a beak point over a straight point? So I prefer a beak point because if you're presenting it on a clear bottom, then I think you've got less chance of getting it hooked up with any debris. Right. Particularly if you've, if you've found like gravel areas and you're comfortable with fishing a gravel spot, mm. which is clear because the weed's not growing on it, near a weed bed. Yeah. So I'd be more comfortable with that big point not getting bird yeah. on any... Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, brilliant. Um, 
Jelly wire, coated up link. Jelly wire, yeah. It's the one, innit? Yeah, this. Anti tangle. Yep. Yeah. And you've got that bit of flexibility at the end. Yeah, it's a great rig. I really like that. And uh, one thing that I have tended to do over the years, I'll go out and I see so many different rigs and so many different angles. But every now and again, I'll get one and I'll think, I'm tying some of them up and I'm going to have a little play with that. Because I am one of those guys that tends to fish a pop up. I should fish more bottom baits. So I'll be giving that a I go. Think, I think, you know, if you are that way inclined, then you should really give this a try. I think you'll be surprised. Brilliant. You'll be very surprised in the hook holds. Excellent. I'll be, do I'll be doing just that, mate. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Cheers, mate.